just no end to these critters. The Nuka World cloning machine is spitting them out somewhere beneath this building. You seem sure these things are being cloned, not just a local flavor of abomination. Aggressive, unflinching, and fighting to the death. It's not natural. Only man-made monsters fight like this. Death Claws, Night Stalkers. <laughs> Feels like home again. Half Rattler, half Coyote things there. And half Death Claw, half Alligator things here. Oh, more of a... I can't hack that console. It needs voice authentication to open. Whose voice? No, wait. Let me guess. Someone who died 200 years ago. Some egghead named Dr. Hyde. He ran afoul of a group of people that valued the rights of animals just as much as human rights. Zip it. Fall back. If that door was still sealed, that means the cyborg couldn't get in either. Then he's still somewhere in Nuka World, looking for a way into the cloning facility. Sneaky bastard. Could be within a few yards of us right now. Hoping we'll find a way in for him. Or he moved on, wrote off Nuka World as a dead end. Maybe he'll try his luck back in the Commonwealth. Try to sniff out a way to transfer his organic brain into a synth body. No. He'd rather clone a completely human body. Besides, everyone's been searching for a way into the Institute for years. But no one's figured out how to get in. There might be an easy way for him to get a synth body. I once visited a secret synth community up in Far Harbor, Maine. A place for runaways from the Institute. Our vault dweller cyborg might try there. I spent more time with him than you did. He's proud of his DNA. He wants to get rid of his synthetic components altogether and be 100% Vault Dweller. If he's that arrogant, he might want to upgrade to a third generation synth body. The latest models are arguably superior to humans. In Far Harbor, the synths have a quiet smugness when dealing with humans. The island is covered in a radioactive fog. The synths aren't bothered by it. But the radiation is deadly to humans. Even if someone pops enough rat away, a snootful of that fog will make a man go wicked crazy right quick. It comes and goes. The people who live there are forced to abandon their settlements as the fog changes each year. When I was there last, it covered just about every part of the island. The humans were crowded into a small section of the docks, while the synths lived in a rather spacious pre-war observatory in the middle of the island. Dima, the rickety old machine who led them, had created a device that would condense the fog out of the atmosphere so that small human communities were safe, but those fog condensers were always in short supply. I suspected that was on purpose. He might have been hedging his bets. You know those children of Adam kooks? What? Oh yeah, ran into some of them down south when I came out of the glowing sea. They're all over the east coast now came pretty far from being just a single weird cult in a backwater hellhole. There's a big group of them in Far Harbor. They thought the fog was a gift to them from their god, so Dima and the synths had to maintain a balance between the children of Adam and the saner folk on the docks. I had the feeling that Dima could just wipe out either group any time he wanted. Seemed like he was a spider sitting in the middle of an electronic web that stretched across that island and the humans around him were no more than flies to be manipulated to serve the interests of the synths. I could imagine that kind of power would be mighty appealing to our cyborg. So you want to hike all over half of New England to ambush him, when we know he's within a stone's throw of us right now. What would you do if we caught him, right now? Six slugs to his... You don't really think he's going to Maine, do you? There's no secret synth community on some island. The island and the synths are real. You're trying to lead me away from the cyborg. You don't think I could beat him? I don't think we can beat him. Last time, in the Capital Wasteland, he took down both of us, along with Daisy, Edna, and Junior. So you want to let someone else deal with him? Then you get to live and tell the story another day. I'll kill the cyborg by myself. You're too damned loud anyway. I know where to get the parts I need to fix Edna and Daisy. And I need your help. Well, ain't that convenient. It's not a trick. On my way into Nuka World, I found an abandoned R&D station. They were testing designs for a new attraction at the park, based on some old pre-war comic book series. 
had some advanced AI hardware to run the animatronic characters. I grabbed just about everything I'll need to rebuild Edna and most of the components to wire Daisy's brain into a new body. I learned a few things about robotics since we last met. I can make some upgrades, improve our odds against the android when we catch him. Just about? Most of? Edna's personality matrix. Daisy's brain. You sure she's still alive in there? You sure Edna's still ticking inside that thing? The casing's cracked, but the data is intact. No damage to internal components. I haven't been able to talk to Daisy since I disconnected her from the cybernetics. But she's still alive. All the AI and cybernetics I scavenged from Nuka World's R&D. What else do we need? Robot viscera, and plenty of it. There's a junkyard to the south. All this talk about the cyborg has got my dander up. How about we mosey over to Galactic Zone and make some fresh robot guts? I ever tell you about a raider gang called the Rust Devils? Less talk, more smash. Attention all my favorite undesirables out there. In case you haven't noticed, it looks like we got ourselves some fresh meat to run the gauntlet. <laughs> Get your ass down to Cola Cars! The main event's about to begin. Remember, longest survival time against Coulter still stands at 1 minute 37 seconds. You think that DJ is talking about our cyborg? Be a shame if this overboss Coulter killed him before I could get my hands on him. Nah, probably some dink from Boston who wandered into the overboss's tourist trap. 